Hello, I'm Kyung Wong, a software engineer at Meta. This is joint work with uh, my colleagues Alice and Nathan. I'm going to talk about e-learning for size. Um, as you know, mobile apps are mainly optimized for size because um, new features are constantly added. Um, in general, size and performance can be tuned uh, with profile guide optimization, uh, PGO. As you know, a link time optimization called LTO can minimize at size at the cost of long real time. Uh, so practically, thin LTO, a scale of LTO, can be used when building large apps. Aligning is critical not only for performance, but also for size. However, the thin LTO inliner is not tuned, which I will cover in this talk mainly, along with LTO inliner as the uh, limit study. Here is an example with the five functions that are uh, defined in five modules from M1 to M5 respectively. As you see, uh, all these functions are good inline candidate to reduce binary size because they are called from single core side, which means by doing inline, we can eliminate the core overhead completely by just moving the body of core into the core side. However, none of the function is inline in this case because it's a separate function. On the other hand, LTO can merge everything into single module. Then in theory, we can uh, inline everything except the function group which is dynamically called from function foo uh, and through the objective C message sent. So uh, let me recap how uh, inliner, the baseline inliner works in LLVM. As you know, under minimum size optimization, the inlining is pretty much prohibited except the single core side case. Uh, because um, so the existing LLVM inliner um, use actually negative inline cost to aggressively inline single single core side case. Otherwise, only tiny functions like the IR size is less than five becomes inline candidate. So my question is: Is that the optimal to reduce binary size? So to answer these questions, I came up with a simple um, cost model shown below. Basically, we consider two costs before and after inlining. Um, as you see, the before inlining, we consider the size of a holy uh, plus the core overhead times number of core side, which is n. The cost after inlining, um, we can eliminate the entire core overhead. However, we still need to clone the, the body of holy and times. So question um, uh, becomes like this case. Um, if you can, uh, we just consider the size after lining is ex expected to be lower or smaller than the size cost before lining, then we allow lining to reduce final size. So I implemented this simple uh, size cost model into module liner. As you know, the module liner is um, recently available in LLVM um, using a priori queue. These two inline graphs shows the static line call counts and the code size saving uh, while varying the number of core size and with the size aligner. As expected, the majority of the size saving comes from single core size case. So the baseline inliner I, I've already described, which is already close to the case of n equals one with the size aligner. However, the size aligner improved the size of the wind further uh, up to around half percent if we consider uh, number of per side equals three. But beyond that, actually, uh, there's no point to inline further to reduce binary size. So now let's think about how thin LTO inliner works. As you know, um, <coughs> thin LTO compiles each module in parallel and separate with the combined equal summary. The one of the key problem with thin LTO inliner is that <coughs> There is um, uh, no global information that tells us uh, whether uh, basically the core size information. So basically, we cannot apply the simple size cost model that I described earlier to thin LTO inliner. Because of that, uh, conservatively, thin LTO inliner 
allows only small inline candidate, like a function zoo. So function foo, which is large, even though it's called from single core side, we are not able to inline with the denatum inliner. The other problem is like from function foo into the function main. Foo is like a normal C++ function because it's annotated with OC drag. Um, however, foo is not the uh, eligible in this case uh, because uh, foo has uh, uh, private references to metadata C in order to dynamically dispatch a function foo. Because of these two reasons, um, we ended up with uh, the following the inefficient uh, inline graph, only small zoo is inline, which is far from the LTO case I've shown earlier. So here is our main contribution. So given this thin FTO pipeline, where thin link runs sequentially while um, IR optimizer calls them runs in parallel. We introduce size inlining analyzer uh, with pre-liner. Basically, we first extend the course of big code summary to reflect the core side counts. In our first implementation, we only um, annotate um, the single core side case at compile time within each module. Because as I, I've already described earlier, the majority of the size win comes from single core side case. And then during the NATO pipeline, we propagate such a big code summary uh, in order to combine single combined summary, then determine inline candidate that are proven to shrink binary size. Similar to forced inline candidate, we forced to inline import and inline such candidate to realize size win before the subsequent IR optimizer for gen um, starts. For the second problem shown in red, um, we, we run size inline analyze again. However, now we find inline candidates, they are not eligible to import. In this case, we find their big code module, pair of big code module, and merge them in order to remove um, inline restrictions. Here is again, same example I've shown earlier. So now with the pre-merger, now we can um, merge the pair of big code module, M1 and M2, to remove inline restrictions associated with function foo. Likewise, now we have a global summary that tells us which inline candidate uh, uh, eligible to shrink the binary size. So the who and zu both are pulled from single core side, which is proven to shrink binary size, so we, we inline them. Like a normal thin LTO case, function who and zu are still compiled in each module, M4 and M5, respectively. However, because there are no references to them, there will be dead strip by linker later. Social app, chat apps are two iOS apps that we develop at our company. Um, these two iOS apps uh, benefit from the size inliner when we apply both uh, pre-liner and pre-merger, up to around 4% size reduction in core size. Clang, as you know, is uh, the compiler. CPU intensive, written in C++ program, um, as an example of uh, um, the toy program. Um, so uh, this benchmark also be uh, benefit from the size aligning, uh, but there is no restrictions in terms of import, so we only you know, see the impact from the pre-aligner. Uh, so to conclude, um, I've shown um, the existing LLVM aligner with the LTO already close to optimal but size inliner with the LTO can improve further by up to half percent. Size inliner with thin LTO is a different story. So we improve core size around 3% for social app and 4% for chat app. Um, as an example of a CPU benchmark, Clang also becomes smaller and faster because we do more inlining um, and then the right inlining, which is save size also, um, the more uh, the improved the performance. Because, which was prohibited with the existing denative uh, liner. So for more details with the throughput number, with the pre-merger, please refer to the following paper. Thanks for your attention. And we can chat about more offline.